How are you doing there, Stephanie? You all right? That's right, we're gonna do another shot now. So remember we had even rim lighting down the face, but now we've added the Octobox. Now the Octobox and the rim lighting combined, you can barely see the rim lighting now because the front light is now so bright. You can see the rim lighting down the arms, but you can't see it on the face. If we jump back to the shot without that, because basically the Octobox is adding light to that area of the face as well. Turn the rim lights off a moment, please, Ash. Now we're only using the Octobox with the grid. So let's have a look. Rim lighting, no rim lighting. Welcome to Carl Taylor Education Live. Tonight is all about softboxes. Let's start looking at what softboxes do. The question we get asked a lot is which softbox should I buy if I'm just starting out? My personal preference uh, would be these two. You can use softboxes on speed lights as well. This is again a common question. Where do I position the softbox? People are scared of using softboxes really close. Watch what happens if we move this softbox further away. The key first thing we're gonna look at is this reflection in the eyes. You can see the exposure on the model is exactly the same, but why is the rest of it different? Inverse square law. We're gonna now move on to using different size softboxes to get the same effect. We're gonna start with a nice Octobox 75. Let's see what happens when Ashley puts the grid on the Octobox 75. It's the same exposure on her skin in this area just here as this shot, this shot, and the same as this shot. You won't believe it looking at it, but it is. The rule of thumb about how soft or how hard the light is, is the size of the light source apparent to the subject. When we use a big softbox, that light energy has to spread out over a much bigger area. It's kind of like spreading your Marmite on toast. Right, we've got a question come in. Let's take a question. Does the shape of the light source impact how homogenous the light is with a softbox? A little bit, yes. How do you fill shadows with coloured gel lighting so the shadows appear tinted? Do you recommend painting a small studio with dark grey or black paint? I'd recommend painting it white, but people say, I can't be creative, I haven't got enough kit. I want to show you how you can be creative. So the first thing we're going to do, and we should do for any shoot, last thing we're going to do is show you what we can do with a small softbox. And I'm not going to use it in the conventional format. So even with a tiny little softbox, we can still do something quite creative. But it's these little details, these little nuanced details in your lighting that's going to make you a master craftsman at lighting and controlling light. <laughs> 